Hey, how's it going everyone? I'm Nathan with the ebook reader blog. For this video, I'm gonna do a review of the new entry level Kindle for 2022. So first thing, just straight off the bat, if you get the $99 version, I'll have the ad. So uh, you have to swipe the screen to turn it on. If you have the ad free version, it'll just show your most recently read book cover on the screen there instead. And then you don't have to swipe the screen to turn it on. So just a quick tip on that. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the hardware first. The main change with this new Kindle, uh, they made it smaller and lighter, and they also gave it a 300 PPI ink screen that also supports dark mode now. So uh, that's definitely uh, an improvement over the previous entry-level Kindle, which only had a 167 PPI screen. Uh, I really like the how small and light this device is. Uh, you, you have the indented screen. I thought I might have problems with my thumb interacting with the screen because the bezels are so narrow on this one, but I actually don't really have a problem because of the indented screen. But I do tend to hold it from the bottom more like this. Uh, it's comfortable to read this way and just kind of stick your thumb up on the screen to turn pages. I do wish I had page buttons like the old entry-level Kindles used to have, but you know, we've moved on to all touchscreen models now. Another change with this new Kindle is they added a USB-C port, so you still got the power button on the bottom as well. Uh, it's got a very basic design, just plastic. It's got a little bit of texture on it. My only hang up with this is that it does scratch really easy and does show scratches, but I mean, it, it is the basic model, so you can't expect everything to be great. I know some people don't like the placement of the power button, but this device is so light that I actually don't have an issue with it. You can actually lean it up against something and the weight does not trigger the power button. Um, so, I mean, the new screen, 300 PPI, does look really good. This is like the best upgrade they've had to the entry-level Kindle in a long time. Otherwise, it's very similar to the previous uh, entry-level Kindle model, but I mean, the screen difference, that is uh, a major improvement. So I really do like reading on this device with an improved screen. I did post a screen comparison review if you wanted to check a bit closer how it compares to other Kindles. But uh, let's go ahead and talk about the front light now. So the front light really hasn't changed from the last model. So you got the four LEDs underneath the bottom part of the screen there. Uh, it doesn't have the color adjustment like you have on the paper right in the Oasis you just have this one kind of cool colored temperature here so front lights not quite as good as it is on the higher up models but it is you know adequate it does have a little bit of shadowy cones at the bottom like you know the previous gen Kindle and like the paper white 3 and stuff it's not quite as even as the newer as like the flush green Kindles but you know I think it's definitely good and definitely adequate um, I don't ever use these high settings unless I'm doing this video here so I mean I never really go above 10 personally but you do have a, a good range of brightness settings here. And like I said, uh, this model does support the dark mode now. So you can switch to white text on a black background. Uh, so that wasn't available on the previous entry level model, but it is available you know, on the Oasis and on the paper white. So it inverts everything except for the images and it will change your front light setting depending on how you got it set up. It'll remember how you had it set previously. So let's go ahead and talk about the interface now. Amazon, you know, they did a bunch of software updates over the past year to redo the whole interface on Kindle. So you got the home screen here um, with a whole bunch of recommendations on it. Don't really care for it myself, but you can just stay over to the library tab if you want to. Uh, so you got a couple of different options here as far as viewing goes, and you've got the scroll bar now. You can use the arrows if you want to go one page at a time. You can jump around your library by using that bar. Uh, they used to have pages, so now it's a little bit different layout, and you can, uh, like I say, you can switch over to these different views here. So I like the list view. Uh, it shows the cover and some information. You can use the cover view as well if you want to just show the covers. Um, and then you have collections as well. It will show the cover view. So uh, there's also the collection views. Like I said, it doesn't have the list option, but when you're using list view, you can view your collections as well. There's a setting for it that you can uh, have your collection show up on the home screen or not. Uh, and then you got the different filtering options right here. If you wanted to filter by comics or, you know, side loaded books, uh, you've got the different options for that. And you have some additional settings here. If you tap the icon for each individual book, you got the options to delete them. You can go to different parts of the books. You can view them on Goodreads, some different stuff like that, add them to a different Goodreads shelf. So you got some different settings as far as that goes from the home screen view. There are, of course, some different features accessible from the settings menu on the home screen here. You got Amazon Kids. You can use any Kindle as a kid's Kindle and any kid Kindle as a regular Kindle. Uh, you got the basic web browser on here, of course. You got the Kindle Store. Uh, so this device does support audiobooks as well. It has Bluetooth for streaming uh, the audio if you want. Um, so yeah, you got the audiobook store and the, e the Kindle book store on here, of course. And then you've got your quick settings menu up here for wi for Wi-Fi, uh, Bluetooth, dark mode syncing, and you can access the main settings menu and adjust the front light from here. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up an ebook and talk about some of the reading features right now. So uh, with the smaller screen here, I kind of tend to favor the smaller font sizes. Uh, you get more words on the screen this way. Uh, with the tighter line spacing, you have all a bunch of different settings for this. You can adjust this font size by using the pinch zooming gesture. So that's a quick way to adjust the font size without having to open up the settings menu. 
Um, so you got the usual stuff, you know, you can hold down on a word, open up the dictionary. You also have some different panels here. You can scroll over to the Wikipedia entry if you have your internet connected. And you've also got uh, translations as well if you wanted to do translations. So another thing, if you scroll down to the bottom of the Wikipedia entry, you can open up the basic web browser to view the Wikipedia entry. I don't think they've really updated this basic web browser in a long time. But, you know, it still works for, you know, stuff like Wikipedia, basic browsing it's not going to work very well for any kind of in-depth type of browsing but a little bit slow a little bit wonky but i mean it is functional as far as like looking up stuff goes and it is kind of handy to have the wikipedia entry to be able to look up different uh, stuff on wikipedia uh, of course you're going to need the wi-fi connected to do that but you know some people like to keep their device in airplane mode all the time to increase battery life and like usual you can hold down on text add highlights and you can add text notes with that as well um, and there's also this feature called X-Ray, so you can look up like character names, uh, different parts about the book. So Amazon's books have this X-Ray feature. Not all of them do, but some do. You can get in here and learn more about the bones of the book, so to speak. Um, you can also use it kind of as a search term, too, as to jump around different uh, you know, parts of the book for a specific uh, character name or something like that. So um, you can use these arrows. It's the same sort of setup as with search. You can jump around to the different uh, locations where the word is referenced. Uh, you got the swipe up from the bottom of the screen. You have this uh, entry here where you can view multiple pages at once. You can easily jump between chapters. Another way to navigate in addition to the table of contents. Uh, so that works pretty quickly and pretty well. Uh, same, you know, same setup the Kindles have had for a while now. Uh, other features up here, if you uh, come into the font adjustment menu we have the different layout settings so they have themes they've had those for a long time I've never really been into them myself but you can set up different themes for different layouts uh, so I've been using this Meriwether font I really like it like I said in the other video I think I got that from my Windows 7's computer you can sideload your own fonts but we can use some of the Amazon fonts like Amazon Ember you got different boldness settings as well so you can kind of fine-tune how dark you want the font to appear how thick you want it um, and you've also got the different line spacing uh, the different margin settings are pretty much just keep the margin set to the widest all the time i wish they'd add some more margin settings uh, on this model i kind of like to have the tighter line spacing with the smaller screen and then you've also got the uh, landscape mode you can switch over to landscape view if you want as well to get the uh, uh, landscape mode on the kindle uh, it doesn't automatically switch it doesn't have one of those sensors so you do have to go into the settings menu if you want to switch over to landscape mode but you know it's nice to have that option some of the other settings in here you do have the option to show a clock while reading it'll show it up there in the middle of the center you can turn off some of these other features like popular highlights and uh, there's word wise for if you're like trying to learn a different language or if it works well for kids um, some different features in here it doesn't have that page animation setting that the paperwhite has for some reason uh, but you got the usual stuff the reading progress so now if you set the reading progress here it'll show you a little timer in the bottom of the corner here where it tells you how much time you have left in the book you can tap on that to cycle through the other options shows page numbers time left in chapter location stuff like that you can also add remove bookmarks by using this little icon here or if you want, you can just tap in the upper corner here to access the bookmarks. I kind of missed the action here, but if you tap there, you can add and remove bookmarks that way without using the menu. Then you can also access any kind of notes or highlights that you've added from the table of contents menu. There's also this option right here to view your notes and highlights. There's also the table of contents uh, with this little icon right here. You can access the table of contents, jump around to different parts of the book that way as well. Um, and then on the other tab of that section, you have your notes and highlights so that you can access those and there's the option to export your notes so you've got if you've had any added it'll show up there so i mean for the most part software features are identical on all kindles like the paperwhite the oasis has all these same kind of features they have the same kind of software uh, i do like how the new kindle has the 300 ppi screen definitely looks good it's also zippier than the last one page turning's nice and quick the interface everything's nice and smooth and of course you got the dark mode support as well on the entry level kindle now so it's more in line with the uh, paperwhite than it's ever been before with the addition of the 300 ppi screen uh, it doesn't have that uh, color adjusting front light like the paperwhite has and of course the paperwhite has the larger screen as well uh, so you do get some extra features for the money with that and the paperwhite of course of course is waterproof a little bit nicer design but you know the basic kindle it gets the job done i really like how small and light it is it's great for portability i like the fact that amazon is offering more options now instead of just a whole bunch of six inch kindles with very few differences so uh, i do like this new kindle but i still think the paperwhite's a little bit better value overall in terms of uh, what you get for the price you do get the uh 
larger screen with the color adjusting front light and a lot of people really do like the uh, warm front light option but you know this one having the regular front light and the 300 ppi screen is definitely a nice upgrade over the previous model uh, they've been offering the 167 ppi screens for 15 years on their kindle so it's really nice to finally see the upgrade on that all right, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video review right here. I covered most of the details. Uh, go ahead and check out the ebookreader.com if you want to check out the written review. I also have a bunch of how-to guides and just general tips for Kindle e-readers if you wanted to find more info on that. So thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.